So over in this post right here, we've got a mini patch notes, which we've got three things. And the most important thing, my goodness, is that there's going to be this new Raid of Fortune event that starts on Friday. And you get points by earning Raid credits. What does that mean? Save your inbox mail for raid wins that have raid credits. Start doing this now. My goodness, I know a lot of people collected them this morning. They're like, oh my God. Because what happens is when you collect them is when they are earned. So you can let them sit in your inbox and just sit there and wait until Friday for this event. Uh, we've also got some patch notes to go over. And then lastly, we've also got Rogue's Awakened Abilities to go over. So let's get into... Uh, the, the first post right here, got an, a, a minor nerf to Red Hulk, which I'm probably okay with. An adjustment to Red Hulk, Spider-Verse tags, and a raid event. There are three timely topics we wanted to provide some advance notice. First, upon further testing of Red Hulk in combat, we are seeing win results in war that exceed the intention. As such, there'll be an adjustment to his passive ability. And basically, uh, I'll read what it is right here. At the end of any turn, when this character has five or more charged, gain seven ability energy and fill this character's speed bar by 50%. This can only trigger once per match. And then they added this right here. And only once per war. Uh, for me, I was worried about seeing Gamma on defense and war and being just like Heroes for Hire 2.0, Dormhold 2.0, something like that. So I'm completely okay with this myself. I know some people are a little bit annoyed that they, they're they they're nerfing the character before he comes out. Uh, but for me, I, I was worried about Gamma being too strong on defense. So me personally, I'm okay with it. I'm sure other people have other opinions on it. Uh, secondly, we will be adding the Spider-Verse tag to Kingpin and Mr. Negative. And then lastly, third, a special raid event will go live Friday, September 16th. So this is a solo milestone and it's named Raid of Fortune. Score points in a five-day milestone by earning raid credits. And so you earn raid credits when you collect them from your inbox. So we're in the hoarding mail right now. Any, any uh, raid rewards that goes into your inbox that has raid credits, you're going to want to save them until this event starts on Friday. And by spending power cores, yikes. Uh, the milestone points will be viewable in game raids rewards include raid team character shards. And I think that's going to be bionic Avengers actually based on the last comment armory 17. We all need those because they're super, super scarce. If you want to get your characters up to armory 17 or gear tier 17 elite fours and fives. Yay. T2 level four ions. Yay. Gold and dark promotion credits, yay, and more. All of those look pretty juicy. And then it says right here, don't miss your chance to get some Bionic Avenger character shards. So I'm hoping that uh, that it's Bionic Avengers, and I hope I, that doesn't just mean <laughs> Vision and Iron Man for me. We've got patch notes. Let's just get into it. Over the course of this release, we got new... War Scourge event. Power up your hero as Guardians, Ravagers, Wave 1 Avengers to earn character shards for Apocalypse, Fiery, Third Horseman, Red Hulk. We've known this for quite some time. Which you'll need with the full Gamma team to unlock Apocalypse. We've got New Famine Saga. So this is going to be for Rogue. Complete the Famine Saga to earn Awakened Ability Materials. And we have her upgraded abilities, which we're going to read. Blue T2 Level 5 ISO 8. And an exclusive Famine costume for Apocalypse energy draining second horseman rogue so uh we've got the abilities here and it mostly affects morgan lefay when she's paired up with rogue or for that matter also red hulk but let's get into it uh her basic attack is going to get a significant upgrade basically uh the bonus on level eight so seven and it can go to eight if this character has one or more horsemen or apocalypse allies so she's got to be paired up with let's say morgan lefay or red hulk Always bonus attack for 300% damage and gain 25% crit chance for each horseman or apocalypse ally for this attack. So she's going to do uh, quite a bit more damage on her basic attack. Then her passive ability will basically give a boost to apocalypse and horseman allies. Basically, before it was just unlimited X-Men allies gain 25% damage. 
Now, Apocalypse and Horseman allies will also gain that extra 25% damage. So that means when Rogue is paired up with Morgan, Morgan Le Fay, Morgan Le Fay now will get 25% more damage. And then this is a minor thing. Clones of this character and all Horsemen and Apocalypse allies have reduced max health and speed compared to standard clones, and they cannot reach maximum ability levels. So that is an anti-Mr. Uh, Sinister effect. All right, let's get back to... The patch notes, uh, we got the new Saga, which is fine. Uh, enhance your roster with five new playable characters. We know about this. Red Hulk, third horseman of the Apocalypse, and the fifth member of the Gamma team. Spider Weaver, which is also going to be required for Apocalypse. Spider-Man Noir and Spider-Man 2099. And then, uh, which is going to be the Tangled Web team, which is going to be a boosted for Cosmic Crucible. And then Mr. Negative, linchpin of the Underworld team, which is a war offense team. Uh, ability stat improvements for Green Goblin, Taskmaster, Kingpin, and Nobu. Made a video earlier today about that, so if you want to check what that is. Stat improvements to Hand Blade Maester and Hand Archer. Now, I was under the impression that those stat improvements... I don't know if it matters so much, but it was only for the minions that were summoned by Nobu. But according to this, maybe it is for Hand Blade Master and Hand Archer. We will see. I still don't think they're going to get much play no matter what. New costumes for Rogue Famine, Elsa, and then Wolverine Uncanny. I'm personally looking forward to uh, a new Wolverine costume. I think that'd be kind of fun. Then we got some information on the Vigilant Tag. The Vigilant Tag will be for the Spider Weaver event campaign, which is the most player favorable way of releasing a new character. So Spider Weaver looks like she's going to be very good. Plus, she's also going to be required to unlock Apocalypse, a part of that special team, which is outside of the legendary and the legendary, uh, the legendary horsemen and the horsemen teams. There was going to be an additional uh, unknown amount of characters. I guess it's probably five, but we don't really know. But the first one that they've announced is Spider Weaver. So that's good that she's in an event campaign. Like I said, I think that's the most player friendly. Hulk Hunter. Participate in select September events to recruit Abomination. So that's already running. And build on the power of the Gamma team in Alliance War. Season 1 of the Cosmic Crucible. Okay, so that's starting up. Uh, battle for updated rewards with new leagues and new stage rules. We've done... We've reviewed this information already, and then we're getting the return of Tower. We've got some minor bug fixes right here. Uh, when Gambit's bonus attack eliminated an enemy, it, the ability didn't end properly and was incorrectly performing a second bonus attack. Then this right here is going to be a, a big improvement for uh, the, bi the second bio node in the Doom Raids. This has been super annoying. For AI-controlled enemies, the AI Adam Warlock special ability Enfeebling Beast was not applying Disrupted to the correct targets. That's correct. He was applying Disrupted to Web Warriors, and none of them are Protectors. It's only supposed to apply to Protectors. Then, when stunned, Magic wasn't summoning a Dark Phoenix after Phoenix or Dark Phoenix was eliminated from battle. I didn't know that that was an issue. Uh, the other thing, too, I want to say is there's one other issue with that particular node that is not addressed here is that Psylocke is giving um, counter and evasion to Jubilee, and it should be to only characters with the uncanny tag. And then there was also a issue on the first skill node with uh, Hela's Greg's uh, not being blocked by the charge mechanic on Kestrel. None of that is mentioned here, so we're gonna have to see how that plays out when the patch goes live. Sound effects for Morgan Le Fay. We're not playing during all of Morgan Le Fay's Pestilence abilities. Um, character weapons would sometimes temporarily disappear when entering the ISO-8 chamber. Uh, this, is th this is something that affected me a lot in Cosmic Crucible, specifically when I was playing against Astonishing X-Men. The on-spawn taunt of an enemy was sometimes forcing players to target enemy characters who didn't possess taunt. Yeah, that was really annoying. What was happening is you'd go up against, let's say, Astonishing X-Men, and the first attack should be targeting Bishop because he has like that taunt on spawn. But instead, you're targeting the middle character, whatever the middle character is. Maybe it was Iceman. Maybe it was uh, Beast. I don't know, depending on who put there. And you couldn't click away and target Bishop. It was super annoying. Uh, 
Rebound chains attacks were incorrectly ending after eliminating an enemy. Good to know. And then this was something that we did when the 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 pestilence uh, saga started last time. A saga in preview mode could be played early when accessing the saga through the find button, and that was something that uh, happened when uh, Morgan Le Fay's saga came out. We were able to do that. All right, so. That is the patch notes for today. We are playing Patch Day Bingo on Twitch. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.